tell you that it's being uploaded. The only thing, um, it, it will only really show people who are speaking. So, you know, as you talk, that's usually who appears in a recording. So if you don't say anything, you won't show up. Just an FYI, if you're uncomfortable with recording. So I see a bunch of familiar faces, but Kissa, you are new to me. Are you a guest on our meeting today? Uh, yes, um, good morning. My name is Kisa and I am um, a guest. I've, this is probably my second time. I, well, I tried last week, but I couldn't get in. So this is my second time just coming in and listening and just seeing what this is all about. So I'm, I'm very, fairly new, <laughs> yeah. um, but thank you for welcoming me. Of course. Welcome, Kisa. Yes, I'm so glad you had trouble getting in last week. I'm really glad you made it here. We'll follow up with you for sure with helpful links or to answer any questions, but you feel free to enjoy the show or participate at your will because you are more than welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Okay, great. All right. Well, then with that, we'll get the meeting rolling. Yes. Is that right? <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. So, um, well, let me start with introductions of everyone, right? All the roles. So our first role, we'll start with the grammarian. Grammarian, can you please let us know what your yes. role is? Okay, thank you, Debbie. Yes, I'd be happy to. And, um, and thank you for jumping in there and being our Toastmaster. G great way to learn. And I know you'll do a great job, so. All right, grammarian, I will, I will be listening carefully. I will, I will be listening for ums and ahs, connector words, and I'm going to do my best to give everybody individual free, uh, feedback on that. So you'll know exactly your strengths or your areas to work on with that. I did select a word of the day. The word of the day is heartfelt. It is an adjective. And it really means sincere, deeply felt. I, I was kind of thinking of Valentine's Day, so I sort of went out on a limb there. And the sentence that could show how it is used is we offer our heartfelt appreciation to our club members who are flexible and active each Monday. So, and, and that that is that is sincere because we have amazing club members that just you know, do the work every Monday. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Sarah Mary. Thanks, Debbie. Great explanation. I agree. This is, this is, uh, as uh, Sonia always says, we are more of a family than just a group. And I agree that it's incredibly heartfelt. All right, let's go to our timer, who I volunteered, John. Can you explain uh, your role? Everybody, please? thank you, Toastmaster. So today I'll be uh, making a heartfelt attempt to keep track of everybody's time today. For our speeches, we'll have five minutes, six minutes, and seven minutes. I will flash green at five, uh, yellow at six, and red at seven. For table topics, we have uh, green at one minute, um, yeah. yellow at one and a half, and two minutes um, for red is the limit table topics and for our evaluations we have green at two minutes yellow at two and a half minutes and red at three minutes so try your best to stay within those time frames for each of the speeches thank you so much back to you sarah wonderful thank you john okay great and then eric do you want to explain your role as general evaluator yes thank you sarah mary good evening or good afternoon Fellow Toastmasters, and yes, I'm Eric Laxer, and I'm the general evaluator of today's meeting. And my role is to coordinate the evaluation portion of our meeting, which includes other team members, the timer, and the grammarian that you just spoke to. Our role will be to provide individual feedback to each speaker, and I will then also provide an evaluation of the meeting as a whole and uh, feedback to my evaluators, uh, which will include myself, which will be quite easy to do. <laughs> so I look forward to a great meeting and I will turn it back to you, Toastmaster Sarah Mary. Thank you, Eric. Great job. Um, okay, well, Dr. Alice Ann is our topics master and one of our speeches for this afternoon. She has had to step away, but the role of topics master is essentially creating a few impromptu questions and then calling on or having people volunteer to answer them 
uh, without having prepared answers. So it really teaches us how to think on our feet. Dr. Alisan, I was just explaining your role as topics master. Would you like to add a little something in? It's going to be fun. <laughs> It's going to be fun, but yes, uh, I will give questions, and you have one to two minutes to answer, and you're not going to be prepared for it, so it's going to be what's in your heart, heartfelt for today. We love it. We're looking forward to it. You always keep us on our toes, Dr. Allison, and we're excited. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, that is all of our roles. This is obviously a team effort, and it takes input from everybody, but without further ado, why don't we jump right into the speech portion of our meeting. David, you are speaker number one. And Debbie, would you like to introduce David and his topic? I would, I would love to. And I'm going to um, be the evaluator for David Jones. His speech will be five to seven minutes long. The title of his speech is What Public Speaking Is. And the purpose of his particular speech is for him to practice using vocal variety or body language to enhance his speech. So that's the, the general purpose. And with that, I will turn it over to David when he is ready. Thank you, uh, General Evaluator, and good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Whenever I speak to somebody about public speaking, I tend to get the same type of a response. It's something like, you know, I'm an individual contributor. I just want to go to work, do my job, and then call it a day. I don't want to get into human resources where I'm going to have to train employees or do webinars. I don't want to be a manager where I'm going to have to run meetings or meet with the executive board or maybe even go out and visit with clients. And I definitely don't want to be a motivational speaker up on stage yelling and screaming. I just want to be, do my job and be left alone at the end of the day. And for some people, that's fine, and to each their own. And it made me think about that perception that public speaking is only about work. It's only about business. But to me, public speaking is about life. It's about those important times in our lives. For instance, everybody at this meeting, unfortunately, at one point or another, is going to have to attend a funeral. It's part of the circle of life. And at the funerals, we usually have a thing called celebration of life, where we'll stand up and talk about the deceased, say something wonderful about them, and just share a story. And it reminded me of about eight or nine years ago, my, my aunt passed away. And we were very close, and she was very influential in my life. I was probably closer to her than I was with my mother, and she was probably closer to me than she was with her own kids. And in part, I am who I am today because of her. And she was very well loved. She had a lot of friends and acquaintances and her funeral was standing room only. It was packed. I had never been to a funeral with so many people. It was a wonderful tribute to her life. And I remember sitting there listening to people. They started getting up and giving heartfelt stories about her and various information. And I just sat there, just sat there on my hands, looking around, thinking, there's no way I'm gonna stand up in front of all these people and share a story. I, I was too scared. My cousin, Adam, he goes walking up there and he stands up and he starts telling a story. And I knew the story, I, I was there. It wasn't really that interesting of a story, but he embellished it a little bit, made it sound better than it was. And I was thinking, I have better stories. I, I had more interesting facts and encounters with her. But the difference was, Adam was up on stage speaking and I was sitting there scared. I look back on that moment with regret. It was almost disrespectful to my aunt. I mean, she was such an important part of my life and I didn't have the courage to stand up and tell a story about her. I didn't have the courage to tell interesting facts and how much she meant to me. In her death, I didn't celebrate or honor her death. That is the celebration of life. That is what public speaking is about to me. But on the other spectrum, there's good times. There's like weddings that we go to, our friends' weddings, our kids' weddings, our family weddings. In fact, it was this past weekend, I watched a movie called Plus One. It's about a guy and a girl, and they're both single, and they go to weddings with each other. And spoiler alert, they end up together at the end of the movie. But 
during the movie, they kept showing clips of wedding speeches that went really bad. Because a lot of people at weddings get really drunk and they'll give a speech and they'll embarrass themselves or they'll say something inappropriate. Or they'll say, well, we all know why she got married. They, they say things they shouldn't say. And I believe we have an obligation to our family and friends to stand up and give them a really good speech to honor them and their new partner and encourage them along their journey of life. To me, that's what public speaking is all about. Now, some of us have kids, some of us want to have kids someday. And when we do, we're going to have to attend a parent teacher conference. And when we go to those conferences, there's going to be ourselves and maybe 20 or 30 other parents standing there in front of the teacher. And are we going to have the courage to raise our hands and talk about what's going on in the school, what's going on in the classroom or, or with our kids? Are we going to be able to talk about issues where the rest of the room can engage and help find solutions? Are we going to wait until the after, after the meeting and go, hey, can I, can I talk to you about Johnny? We have an obligation for our family and our kids to stand up for them and speak about them and make things right. That's public speaking to me. Some of us want to attend protests where we stand up for those that can't stand up for themselves. We want to stand up for different injustices. Are we going to be the people that are carrying the signs and chanting? Are we going to be the ones with the megaphone saying, let's go, let's take care of this. So let's go talk to these people and resolve this issue. All of those things are what public speaking is about to me. They're the important parts of our lives. Yes, public speaking and business is important, but it's those precious moments in our lives that we can never ever get back. That is what public speaking is about to me. And that's why we need to practice public speaking and promote it. Make sure you're the person with the megaphone in your hand. Madam Toastmaster. Yay, David, that was so good. Uh, I love how you took public speaking to a much deeper level and really pulled apart the various ways that we can use public speaking, not only to celebrate or a life that's past or a new marriage, but also to make world change, right? I mean, there's, there are just too many, there are too many golden tongues out there that are staying silent and we need them fighting for good causes. So thank you for that, David. It's wonderful. And knowing the audience that you're going to speak to with that portion of your speech, I think it's going to be really impactful. So great job. Great job. Um, okay, with that, we shall move on to our second speaker. Dr. Alisane, are, are you with us? Wonderful. Okay, are you ready to get going? Um, let me let Eric actually introduce you and your speech. Eric. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, for this honor. It is really a privilege for me to introduce Toastmaster Alison Crump, who I have already had the pleasure of hearing speak several times and have really enjoyed each of her speeches. Today, she's going to give us a speech titled The Anger Game, and it is part of her engaging humor pathway, specifically focusing on storytelling. Please join me in welcoming Toastmaster Dr. Alison. Thank you, Eric. Have you all played a game before? Were they learning lessons in those games? Or were you just playing the game just for the sake of playing the game? When my children were small, every game that I created was for a life lesson. And I created a game called the Anger Game. What we needed was a jar full of candy and a deck of cards. The game began with this lesson, controlling your anger. My children thought, how can we be angry? We're going to get candy. But they soon learned anger was a very live, real, tangible part of this game. The game. If you pull the deck of cards, no. I gave everyone 10 pieces of candy, small in a circle, and no one got cards. The cards were in the middle of the table, along with a pile of candy. These were the rules. 
If you pull the heart, you had to give a piece of candy to the person on your right. If you pull the diamond, you had to give a piece of candy to the person on your left. If you pull the club, you can take a piece of candy from anyone in the group. But if you pull the spade, you can pull candy on the pie. You get five pieces. Oh, they love the spade. Get five pieces of candy. Where the anchor came in at, as long as you had candy, you can play the game. But the moment you didn't have any candy, you was out of the game. Needless to say, children got angry when they got pulled out the game. They pulled the heart. They took a piece of candy from the person on the right. Oh, just wait till I pull. I'm going to take a piece of candy from you. They were getting angry. Every time they out, got a little low. They were highly upset. The reason why I wanted this game to be so real in a life lesson for my children was there are going to be situations and circumstances which caused you to be angry. How you respond to them was the key. Can't get angry, can't yell at anyone, call people out of their name, be disrespectful. Didn't want them to handle life like that. This game was created to teach them how to handle their anger. I didn't know how well it was going to work. I had no idea, but it was fun in the making. We sat down every once in a while and played the anger game. And we played it so often that our children decided, mom, can we play the anger game? I think it doesn't matter, they want to can at that moment. But we've had episodes or someone took the last piece of candy from someone in the circle. And that last piece of candy was the breaking one. They was, yeah, you took my candy. You could have took it from somebody else who had four or five pieces. Why you take my last piece? Now I'm not in the game. And I would just sit there and look and say, now you know you're out of the game, right? But she took my last piece. Okay, but you're out of the game, right? I said, but guess what? If you don't get angry, the next person that pulls a heart or a diamond will give you a piece of candy and you're back in the game. That was a hard lesson, especially for my youngest. He would get so upset and literally cry because she took it as a personal assault when someone took a piece of candy from her. I wanted to teach them the anger was real, but how we handle our anger set the tone for everything. I can't say that they have mastered anger. Can't say that at all. But they do remember how I handle my anger, how I handle the person that made me angry, set the tone. And every once in a while, everyone has grown now. Every once in a while, we talk about the anger game. Mom, why did you create that game? Why was it so important? Because I wanted to teach my children that in life, a lot of things will make us angry. In life, a lot of things will cause us to stir it up. But how we express anger always set the tone. I wanted my children to know that. If they became older, teenagers, oh my goodness. Whenever they got angry and frustrated, I will always say, now, you know you're out the game, right? You gotta stay in the game if you wanna win. You gotta stay in the game. And staying in the game is to how you handle your anger. Stay in the game. Because if you blow up, get all discombobulated, crazy, upset, disrespectful, uh, you might not be able to come back in the game. If you want to stay in the game, handle your anger correct. In the process of teaching my children about staying in the game, we talked about counting to 10. We 
talked about reflecting on what you're going to say next and if you're going to be able to come back from that. Is it true? But one of the things that my children learn most that hurt people, hurt people. And if you're angry because you're hurt, your response is not that we hurt someone else. Work on your anger. It takes some practice, but we enjoy playing the game. My children did learn the lesson. I will still handle anger. Sometimes I just gotta remind them. Damn, okay. Back to you. Tell them. Yay! Thank you, Dr. Allison. That was wonderful. I have to say, I deeply empathize with your youngest. I take a lot of things personally. I think I think somebody stealing my candy would make me very upset. So I would I would need to work on that game with you. Um, oh no, did we lose her? Okay, well, she is our topics master. So we'll give it, maybe we'll give her a second to get back on. That is the next portion. I'm not sure if we're ready to jump to evaluations yet. I know you might need a couple of seconds to gather your thoughts. She promised it was gonna be terribly fun. So I'd hate to, I hate to. Well, she'll be back, I bet. She probably just She's actually disconnected. Okay, just give her a couple of seconds. Yeah, like she might have been in the hospital. Oh yeah, she yeah, she looks like she's there. She's she's such a champion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes me feel like yeah, none of us ever have any excuses. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. <laughs> um, Kisa, are you enjoying the meeting so far? Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank How did you, you find us? Um, I was just, I heard about Toastmasters for like public speaking and um, I just Googled and looked up different groups and, and that's how I found you all. Oh, wonderful. Have, have you visited uh, any other clubs or are we the first one? You're the first one. Okay, great. Yeah, are you still shopping around a bit? Um, I haven't started <laughs> shopping. I just kind of stopped here. Good but, for you. Um, Good for you. I know. I use the excuse like I'm searching for far too long. And then I finally just was like, I have to pick one and get going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, maybe I'll start. I just, you know, I found you all and I'm, that's where I've, I've been for, like I said, the second time. So yeah. no, that's awesome. You take your time and, and Debbie, you'll follow up with Kisa, right? That's right. I think we've, I think I had already communicated with you, Kisa, I believe with membership info, I believe, uh -huh. and, and I will do it again. And, okay. and I remember this was the only club I visited when I was searching and it just felt right. <laughs> so here I am. Dang, yeah. later, so. <laughs> anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. And you take your time, you know, we'd love to have you, of course, but okay. you got to find your home. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Of course. Okay, well, does anybody have Dr. I could do table topics. Um, thank, thank you, David. If you'd like to get something started, that'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. Sure. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to call on some people to have roles, but I will uh, explain it first. So as table topics are impromptu speaking, they are one to two minute speeches. And they're basically as if you're at a bar or at a party or meeting somebody, you're just going to talk about a random subject. I'm going to ask a random question. And you can just respond. And I'll start with somebody who doesn't have a role. Keisha, are you interested in trying one out, or do you want to maybe pass for next time? Okay, I literally have no idea what what I'm doing, but I'll circle. Um, how about if I have an experienced Toastmaster do it, and then I'll circle back to you for number two. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Thank you. All right, and Sarah Merritt, I know she is um, a fairly new newlywed, aren't you, or no? Me, I'm new. Yes, it's only been a few months. Mm -hmm. Well, would you like to tell the group how and where you met your husband and why you decided he was the one? Sure. That's a great question. I love telling this story. So my husband and I were introduced from a friend of a friend of a friend. It was a crazy, cra it was a crazy amount of circumstances that had to come together for the universe to help us collide. But a girlfriend of mine took a job in this little town in Louisiana called Alexandria. And then I moved to Boston, Massachusetts to get my master's. When I was there, I realized that everybody was a lot younger than I was and I just needed some young adult friends. And so I reached out to my, my girlfriend in Louisiana and I was just 
complaining to her how I didn't have community. And she said, well, there's this guy passing through our office in Alexandria and he's from Boston. He's coming up in a couple of weeks. And he said, he has a group of friends he could introduce you to. I was like, awesome. So we met at a Red Sox game, grabbed a beer afterwards. He introduces me to this gentleman named Craig, who ends up being roommates with my now husband, Mike. And I told Mike and Craig from the get-go that I was not interested in dating. I was way too busy. I had a master's to accomplish. I had things I needed to get done and boyfriend was not, was not in the mix. But my husband won me over after time. We started out as friends for months and I still to this day say that it was because he made me laugh. Nobody makes me laugh like my husband makes me laugh. And he just does these hilarious little bits that still get me. But that really was what won me over. And I know it sounds corny. I was always like a one date wonder. I'd date a guy, I'd go on one date and I'd know it wasn't right and I'd, I'd end it. But with my husband, he just, there was something different. And I know it sounds crazy, but when you know, you really do just know. And of course it's, it's work every day, you know, that's love is work, but it's, it's a choice that I love to make every single day. So thank you for that opportunity, David. <laughs> thank you very much. And John, the next question is for you and I'll be your timer once you finish writing down what you wrote. But um, I know you have a wedding ring on and we have a member at Queen City and his name's Elvis and his wife's birthday is only a few days before Valentine's and their first Valentine's together. I don't know if she tricked him, but she said, don't worry about a Valentine's gift. She just gave me a birthday gift. And, and he, he took the bait and he didn't get her a Valentine's gift. And it, he, he says it didn't turn out well. No. What are some of the worst and best Valentine's gifts that you have given to your wife? Thank you for the question, David. Um, so I don't even know how to answer this. My father, what, if you knew him, but a great sense of humor, you know, him and my mom have been together forever. They're a great couple. So he doesn't get anything for mom on Valentine's Day. He says, Every day is Valentine's Day. So it doesn't matter. How can I be full of BS on one day of the year when every day is Valentine's Day? So I tried, <laughs> I tried to adopt that <laughs> same philosophy. And I am so fortunate that my current wife has that same sense of humor. Uh, today, she, <laughs> she texted me and said, I know we don't normally do this, but happy Valentine's Day. And of course I, I love her dearly and everything. So I guess that's best and worst. <laughs> it sounds like we don't, you know, celebrate it or acknowledge it. I'm so fortunate that my wife bought into that theory <laughs> and doesn't hold it against me. So, uh, and I'm also thinking of, of a girl that I dated before, uh, Christy, my wife, and nothing really comes to mind. I probably tried to pull that stunt before on previous girlfriends. And like Sarah Mary, hence why some, some things has happened. That's probably why I married to her for a lot of reasons is that we have that same level. And now I'm thinking I need to do something before I leave my office tonight. So thank you so much. <laughs> Back to you, <laughs> Table Topics Master. Thank you. Thank you. So I need to get rid of my background real quick. And Gregory, are you available for a question? He usually just does not participate, Pays but good try. <laughs> Well, I will go to Eric because I know he's been married for a long time and and he's Canadian. So maybe Valentine's, is, is it worldwide, Eric? Do, you, do they have Valentine's in Canada? I don't even know. Do they do? Yeah, they do. Yes. Yes, we do. And I think it'd be interesting. You may have told the story before. The same as Carrie and Mary Carrie is, or Sarah Mary. Uh, where did you meet your wife and what attracted you to her to, to make her your wife? And, and how long have you all been married? Thank you for the question, Toastmaster David. My wife and I met when we were 12 years old. We actually went to the same day school that had two separate campuses and the campuses then merged into a high school. And when we were in sixth grade, the year before you transitioned to the high school and the system is a little different in Canada because where I went, we didn't have a middle school. So we had a seventh grade, which was your first year of high school. 
prior to high school, the two classes from the different campuses get to meet. So the first time I actually ever met my wife, we were 12 years old. We weren't friends. We had a bit of an attraction as best as you can or a crush at that age. And several years went by and we just started getting more interested in each other. And eventually it reached a point where we went to our high school prom together. But I must confess that wasn't before I used the usual networking of friends to find out, well, if I ask her out, will she go out with me? And then what's going to happen? So that preceded our going to prom. And I do remember the first time I called her, I was at a friend's house. And shortly thereafter, we started dating and we were very different. And my friend kept teasing me and he said, I will give you a relationship three months at the max with her. And that was about 37 years ago because through dating and marriage, we've been together since we were 17 years old. So uh, that's my story, how I met my wife. I could go into a lot of other aspects related to Valentine's gifts, but we'll save that for another day. So thank you, Mr. Topic, Table Topics for that question. Thank you for sharing, Eric. And Madam Table Top or Toastmaster, do we have time for one more? Because I'd like to circle back to Kisa and see if she's interested. Absolutely, yes, we do. Okay, all right. And Kisa, are you? Do you get the concept? Are you interested in getting a softball question? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> well, we don't know anything about you, therefore, I'm just going to ask: What is what? a memorable Valentine's date you've had, or one that was a disaster? Hopefully, a good one. But any Valentine <laughs> stories you might have. Um, well, yes, I will say a memorable um, Valentine's date or time would be here in the present. Literally yesterday, <laughs> I celebrated Valentine's Day yesterday. I am um, divorced for maybe 10 years now, and I'm currently single. And so I decided to, I mean, love. I feel like love is every day. Valentine's Day should be every day. So I decided a few weeks ago to, to just do a lot of self-care and, and love for myself. So I, yesterday I, I went and bought myself a Valentine's Day balloon. I'm sorry, I had a call come through. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah, so I went and bought um, a Valentine, that Valentine's Day balloon, um, chocolate covered strawberries, a bottle of wine, and I um, hired a massage therapist. Um, and she came, oh, I said, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> she came to the house yesterday and I got a massage and just did a lot of um, self care for myself, lit some candles, had the rose petals, and just loved on myself and it felt really good. And I feel like that's a Valentine's that I will always remember. Uh, yes, so <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. I love the, the self-love and the self-care, that's the best. Yes. Can we get a timer's report? Absolutely. So for our speeches today for David's speech we had five minutes and 21 sorry 29 seconds for Dr. Alassane she was right on point exactly seven minutes for our table topic Sarah Mary was one minute 45 seconds and David took my time uh, thank you David for stepping in I appreciate that 147 yeah. 147 for Eric, uh, one minute and 31 seconds. And for Kisa, one minute and 25 seconds. And back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Perfect, thank you. Great job, everybody. We stay within our time limits and we had a, a lot of substance there. Thank you so much, David, for stepping in. That was really fun and for sticking to the theme. I, I really appreciate you doing that for Dr. Allison and our, our team here, our family here. Okay, well now we're gonna move on to the evaluations portion of our meeting. So Toastmaster Eric, you are our general evaluator. Would you like to kick us off? Thank you, Toastmaster Sarah Mary. Yes, it's my pleasure to coordinate this part of our meeting. And I'd like to begin by calling upon Toastmaster Deborah, who will provide her evaluation of the speech from Toastmaster David. Thank you. Uh, th thank you so much, Eric. All right, so 
I was, I had the, the privilege of evaluating David Jones and his title, as you might recall, was what public speaking is. I want to first say David was dressed very, very nice. And I thought, what a great way to show respect for the speech and the audience by, by dressing up. And I, I thought, cool, I want to follow that lead and do the same thing as I give future speeches. So I thought, very nice. The title, it made me really curious. I, I knew it would be interesting and I figured it would be just about the thing that we are all here to learn about public speaking. And I, I just was very curious and eager to hear the message. I think as you told your story, you told, you, you told us about your aunt and I thought, who has not felt the way that David described, where you wanted to say something desperately, it, you know, whatever important event it was, you wanted to say something desperately, but fear held us back. Who has not had that experience? I know I have. And I, it made me think personally about when my parents had their 50th anniversary, my siblings and I were going to give a short little speech. I get up there thinking, I got this. And then I just started crying. <laughs> and I thought, oh my Lord, you know, what? A, that's not how I wanted it to go. So I just choked up and stopped. <laughs> so I, I could so relate to your story, David. And the funeral story that you shared about your aunt was very, very heartfelt. We learned a little bit about you that your aunt was such an important person in your life and really helped you to be the, the Toastmaster that you are today. And I thought, great, great topic, great story that we could relate to. I, I felt your gestures because part of this was about your vocal variety and your gestures. And I thought, you, you're, you had natural gestures, your body language was really appropriate for your topic. You had great eye contact. As I watched and listened to, I think you exude trust. For me, I felt trust. And I thought, what a great speaker to be able to help people just feel that connection with you. So you ended with a call to action. And as, as I've been trying to learn how to do evaluations better, they say it's a good thing to call your audience to action. You did that. You said, don't be the person at the end of the meeting who goes up and whispers something. Make sure you have that courage and that ability and practice all you need to in order to speak on your behalf or the behalf of others that you care about. And I thought, I so admire people who can do what you just said, speak from your heart and speak clearly and speak often. So thank you so much, David. I enjoyed your speech. Thank you, Toastmaster Deborah. I will now proceed with providing the evaluation for Toastmaster Alice Ann. And I realize she's currently not present, but fortunately we are recording the meeting, which I think is an excellent addition to our meeting this week. So Dr. Allison, when I introduced you, I provided some complimentary comments, having heard you speak before, and you did not disappoint. Consistent with your previous speeches, I thought your speech today overall was excellent. And let me tell you why. First of all, you started off with a question. And that always gets the audience engaged. And I thought that was an excellent strategy. Not only did you start off with a question, but you brought us to a topic that most of us, if not all of us, are familiar with going back to the time we were kids, games. We always played games with kids, as kids, because games were an important way that we learned how to socialize and also get through life. And what better topic to focus on with your children in a game? and to choose for a topic for us than anger. You were way ahead of your time, because as you may know, the, the title of the topic you spoke on today is emotional intelligence. And many people, including in college and corporate America, there, is a, there are a lot of resources going in today to help people improve their emotional intelligence, because often in life, 
how far we get determines our, on our ability to control our emotions. Here's what I loved about your speech. The way you brought us in with children using different voices to specify different things that your kids said, kids said really made it feel like we were close to being there with you at the moment. And the way you used your hand gestures, I thought paired very well with the message you were conveying. For example, when you were talking about anger, I saw that you held your hand in a fist and then you opened your hand up after you moved on to giving us suggestions of how to handle anger. Some of the phrases that you use were also outstanding and I took a few down that I wanna share back with you. For example, you said, you got to stay in the game because if you blow up, you might not be able to stay in the game. And there's a great message there. Another message you gave that made me think a little bit, but I think was really very strong, is are four simple words that I'm going to use when I speak to other people about this topic. Hurt people hurt people. And in order to convey that message, it's important that you use your tone correctly, which I thought you did beautifully because I had no problem understanding what you were trying to convey once I thought about it for a second. A few suggestions going forward. If you give this speech again or others, it may be helpful to stand slightly further away from the camera in order to see some of your hand gestures and body language a little bit more. That's number one. The second is, I, I would like to have heard some real life examples of how your kids handled what you taught them in certain situations. And the third one would be, how did they turn out later? Be a little bit more specific in terms of how did things turn out for your kids later in life? You spoke generally about that, but again, I think specific examples would have been very helpful. So thank you for your excellent speech. And I look forward to hearing you speak again. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Wonderful evaluations, absolutely. Is it, Eric, do you continue with the general evaluation? Yes, yes, actually, I, uh, I shouldn't have said that. It's okay, <laughs> go for it. I, I'm glad you did because I didn't know the next <laughs> order of things. <laughs> we're, we're, actually, what we're supposed to do now, what I'm supposed to do now is ask for a timer's report. So we're gonna go back to John and ask for a timer's report. Thank you so much, Eric. So for, Deborah's evaluation of David, we had three minutes and 15 seconds. And for Eric's evaluation of Dr. Alassan, three minutes and 17 seconds. Thank you so much. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Uh, yes, and, and I'm at, still at the general evaluator. I'll continue with uh, a few comments now about the general meeting. And kudos to you, Sarah Mary. You started off by letting us know this was your first time being the Toastmaster of the day. And you did an outstanding job. We all know it's not an easy role to play. There can be a lot of juggling. Sometimes there are some unpredictable issues that come up. And that was the case today. For example, we started the meeting with some open roles, which you filled them. You also offered to take on certain roles when either somebody wasn't available, which you did great. When uh, Alice Ann was not on screen, you took us on a slight detour and you started engaging our guests, which I thought was excellent. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think your first go at, at Toastmaster of the Day was fantastic. And I know you're gonna do an even better job going forward. Uh, I'd also like to give kudos to Toastmaster David for stepping in when Dr. Allison was not available and just helping the meeting roll along extremely fluidly. So that was very well done. And I thought the questions for table topics today were great. I'd like to say that overall as a group, we really gave a heartfelt try to make this reading run smoothly and I think we succeeded. Uh, I'd like to just make a few comments on Deborah in terms of your evaluation. I thought your evaluation for David was very on point. You pointed out that his topic was appropriate, his vocal variety, his gestures were good, his eye contact was good. One suggestion that I think you could have made to David in terms of uh, what to add to his speeches, because it's always nice to give some constructive criticism or something to work on at the end, perhaps would have been to give the, the audience some resources in terms of where we can go to learn how to become a better public speaker. For example, Toastmasters, but I know there are others uh, out there as well. So that would be the one addition I would have suggested to you in the way you evaluated his speech. 
I'm now going to call upon the grammarian for a grammarian report, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Eric. And uh, thank you for the feedback on my evaluation. That was really heartfelt and helpful to me. So thank you. All right, our word of the day was heartfelt. And I heard this word spoken by John, Alice Ann, David, and Eric. And I, if I missed anyone, please let me know. But those were the individuals who I heard use our word of the day today. I, as I as I listened, I, I was listening carefully, and I have to really commend all of our speakers, whether they were speech givers or whether they were table topics individuals. David, I heard no connectors. Smooth, Alice Ann, I heard no connectors. Kisa, you. You self-correct, thank you for doing table topics and you actually self-corrected one time in there and you caught yourself using an um, I believe it was, but you maybe had four occasions where you had a connector word like and, or I mean, so, or um. Sarah Mary, I heard no connectors. And I know, I think it was last week you talked about during our free speech time is when we use it the most. So I was so impressed with everybody's ability to be a really smooth speaker. John, maybe two times I heard so. Eric, I heard no connectors. I am sure I was filled with connector words, but I could not speak and listen to myself. So if you, I'm sure I can use feedback on that, but, but thank you. And uh, I was so, I was really impressed with our group and our speaking skills and, people's conscientiousness about that. So thank you. Back to you, Eric. Thank you, Toastmaster Deborah. I will now turn the meeting back to our Toastmaster of the day, Sarah Mary. Thank you. Wonderful job, guys. Awesome. Kisa, at this time, we'd love to just get a little feedback from you as well, just your experience with us. Do you mind just giving us a little bit of your feedback? No, I, I don't mind. Uh, I, I enjoyed it so far. I, I feel like it's very informative. So, so far, so good. 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 That's what we like I'm to hear. Learning. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm learning as I'm listening in and everything. Perfect. Perfect. Well, good. Well, thank you for having the courage to participate. That's, Sometimes our guests don't want to, but we're really grateful that you did and you did a wonderful job. We learned from you as well. So it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, we've got a few more minutes. So I am just going to make some announcements, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, let me make the announcements. Um, let's see. Okay, so I am going to type into the chat our competition dates for area 24, which I guess is our area is March 19th and then division C looks like it's April 16th and that's the website you can go to to learn more information. I want to plug for our sister club Queen City Toastmasters Kisa we recently sistered with a different Toastmaster club in the Charlotte area which David and Eric are from but they participate in our meetings and we're able to participate in theirs. so it kind of gives us a way to go to an in-person meeting once a week because they do a hybrid approach while our club is strictly online. So it's just kind of a way to maybe get a few more speeches in, accomplish goals a little bit quicker because we can speak twice a week now and it still count for our, our South Park Club and same for Queen City. So this is their website. I will be giving a speech tomorrow. So if y'all want to come either on Zoom or in person, of course, I would love to have my family there. I want to congratulate Queen City Toastmasters on, you're gonna have to forgive me if I mispronounce this and David, Eric, y'all correct me, on receiving the Smedley Award. You've received Smedley, Schmedley, Smedley? Ralph Smedley is the founder of Toastmasters. Okay, all right, well, there you go. New information for me. <laughs> 
Congratulations. You grew your club by five in, between the months of, let's see, was it August 1st and the end of September in 2021. Mm-hmm. Y'all are a wonderful club and it's been a joy to sister with all of you and to have you participating in our meetings too. Obviously, today's just a wonderful example of how much y'all have stepped up and just really supported our club to being a better version of itself. So we're so, so deserving and we're so grateful. Yes, Debbie, please. Um, Sarah, Mary, you're going to... Um... You're going to practice your speech tomorrow. Is that right? I am going to, I'm giving just one, honestly, that I've given before to this club, just because they, they need a role filled, but I am going to put my competition speech together this week. I was just out of town last week. So it, yeah, so I'll, I'll present it here first and then I'll do it. So UCTM, right. So, so we can, I can get round robins from everyone. So that's next Monday. We'll be able to hear you and yes. And- Okay, and support you. Okay. Yes, that'd be awesome. I definitely want to hear from you guys because I know time is it's going to fly. So I want to be very ready. <laughs> okay. You did a great job. So thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I couldn't have done it without you guys. So I appreciate y'all. And I just want to say that there's no meeting next week because it's President's okay. Day. So 221, right. we will not have a meeting. Okay. Okay. And I think that's everything. Debbie, David, anybody? Nope. Okay. So two weeks, we'll hear your speech then. In, in two, two weeks. weeks. Yes. Yeah. So that's actually perfect timing for me then. Yeah. <laughs> well, I might, maybe I'll try it at QCTM next week then on their Tuesday, if there's still room. Okay. So I'll, I'll let y'all know though. I'll keep you posted. Okay, my friends. Well, that's our meeting. We did it. Great job. <laughs> all right. We'll see y'all next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Great y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. Care, folks. Bye, Keitha. See you. Bye, John. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's (laughs) Day. Bye, Carla.